What's going on, everybody? These are my Week 14 waiver wire pickups for fantasy football. Every position ranked, very detailed, very intricate. Let's go on to the waivers. All right, so uh, four teams on by this week. This is the last bye week, so after this, no more bye weeks. The four teams on by are the Colts, Dolphins, Patriots, and Eagles. Quarterbacks to add, if you're realistically in a competitive league, a one quarterback league, there's only two quarterbacks you probably would want to consider picking up, especially this late into the season. Number one, Taysom Hill. Number two, Cam. And I mean, you could really rank Cam number one. It They're both really good. And then after that, you probably don't want any part of these quarterbacks but I'll go through them really quick we got Derek Carr in a plus matchup against the Chiefs but oh wait a second the Chiefs defense actually has been playing really well the last few games so that's why it's not that great I put slash Marcus Mariota uh, because people kind of think that Mariota might play I mean if the Raiders are out of the playoff picture after this game why not start playing Marcus Mariota more like in a super flex league or a deep specialty league, you may want to consider adding Mariota as your QB4 or something like that. Then we got Ryan Tannehill. Disaster year this year for him fantasy-wise, but great matchup against the Jags. Teddy Bridgewater, he's been absolutely awful the last few games, but another great matchup uh, going against the Lions. Then we have Jimmy G, which you're not really considering starting him this week. But after that, he's got the Falcons. He's got the Titans and then the Texans. So that's a sweet matchup if you're in a deep league. Big Ben, low ceiling guy, but some pretty good matchups. So I do like him. Like I was saying, you won't really consider starting him. I don't know what you're going to do with this information, but I raked it the best for you. Uh, then we have Taylor Heineke, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields. I assume he's going to be back this week, but keep tabs on that. He's been injured, been out two weeks. Then we have Davis Mills. I don't think Tyrod Taylor is going to start. And Mike Glennon and Daniel Jones both injured, so it could be Jake Fromm for week 14. Okay, for running backs, this was a little bit complicated, a little bit messy, but I dug through the mess for you guys. The reason I don't have any tight ends running backs because – I assume you're not in a joke of a league and it's competitive because if there's any type of competition, both tight end running backs are likely added. I know it says under 50% on a lot of platforms, but those include free leagues where there's literally just no one playing a free league. That's like a ghost town. Literally no one's setting their lineup. No one's logging into those leagues. So yeah, every, I mean, every single league I'm in, both tight end running backs are rostered, and it's like not even close. Like, <laughs> breaking news Derrick Henry uh, is injured. Like, that that was a long time ago. Uh, Adrian Peterson's not on the team anymore. This is old news. So, obviously, both Hilliard and Foreman should be added ages ago. Um, so, other than the tight ends running backs, uh, we want to add these two running backs. That's Jamichael Hasty and Chuba Hubbard. Now, I want to go into detail with these guys. Jamichael Hasty, really not worth an ad if Eli Mitchell is ready to go, but this guy suffered like three injuries this year and brand new injury concussion that shocked me because he seemed okay during the game. But later after the game, after the Seahawks game, boom, Eli Mitchell has a concussion. Don't know if he's going to clear it or not. Like this is a type of injury that really varies a lot. Like he could be good to go and, and healthy and, just no signs of a concussion when we're nearing towards a Friday and Saturday. But uh, it could be really bad to where he can't play this week. So we don't know that. And also Jeff Wilson's knee dear, did flare up. They're trying to brush it off as a minor thing, which it could be. But Jeff Wilson has not been productive this year. He is coming off a serious injury from you know way back, right? He hasn't played that much. So... Could still be under uh, effects of that old significant injury. And uh, he might not even play. So that's why I got Jermichael Hasty at number two. Now, now he could be number one, but I'm going to go with Chuba Hubbard. 
I've seen a lot of other people's waiver rankings, and they're saying to go add Amir Abdullah, go add him. Now, I might be wrong here, but what I what I think is it's going to be uh, Chuba Hubbard getting about two-thirds of the carry, so maybe like a 60-40 split or even more, maybe closer to 70-30 split. I still think Chuba Hubbard's going to be the... Uh, first down back, second down back, sometimes third down back. And I do think Amir Abdullah is going to be used uh, more than just sprinkled in, maybe more than just a pass catching back. But nonetheless, I think Chuba Hubbard is going to be the main back there and also a plus matchup. The game where we saw Amir Abdullah get used quite a bit uh, it was a blowout. Like it, it just looked like a complete mess. And I think the Panthers just had a bye week last week, so they're going to regroup, and I do expect them to start Chuba Hubbard. Uh, again, that's just my prediction. Other people think it's going to be Amir Abdullah. I think it's going to be Chuba Hubbard, and so I'm rolling with him. And then uh, if you need some depth at running back, we have Adrian Peterson, Rashad Penny, Amir Abdullah, Daryl Williams, he's still being used, even though Clyde edwards alaire is back. Tevin Coleman seems to be the main back on the Jets with Michael Carter still injured. Rex Burkhead, really mainly if David Johnson can't go, so keep tabs on DJ. Then we got Jeff Wilson in super deep leagues, Eno Benjamin, and Jalen Richard because Drake got injured. And for wide receivers... Again, my Russell Gage, that's like the Titans running backs. We all added Russell Gage last week, right? You guys watched the video. I had Russell Gage ranked pretty much as my number one wide receiver to add. He was number two, but that was solely because Odell Beckham was questionable. There was a small chance that Odell Beckham would be out. And I mean, it would be a disservice. Like, I would have, like, you would have to. Add and start Van Jefferson going against the Jags if Odell is out. Like, that was such a no-brainer must-start. And that's why I ranked Van Jefferson first. But other than that, I was like, dude, guys, you guys got to go pick up Russell Gage. Great matchup against the Bucks. So now a lot of other people are a week late. I actually was able to add Russell Gage and start him last week in one league. But even last week, he was rostered in all my leagues. All my leagues are very competitive and I play in, all, they're all 12 team or deeper, so nothing where I can like get by on, oh, Russell Gage is a free agent in, in the 10 team league because I'm not in any 10 team leagues. Uh, after that, it is pretty wishy washy. Um, there are some good pickups, but it's really, I guess it's really close. I guess like the top 10 here are like all really close. Um, and then number two, we have a random Broncos wide receiver. I don't know who's going to do what. I mean, we've seen Tim Patrick do well. <coughs> um, we've seen Judy get targets uh, and hype. We've seen Cortland Sutton fall off and then get start to get targets. So I don't know what's going to happen, but I feel like uh, the Broncos offense should be able to move the ball with ease against the Lions. That's all I do know. And then we got Robbie Anderson. Love his matchup against the Falcons. KJ Osborne. This is another great pickup, actually, with Adam Thielen injured. So keep tabs on Thielen's injury. Maybe Osborne goes kind of under the radar. Maybe you can get him as a free agent or a $0 FAB ad. Then we have Nick Westbrook. I, I don't know how to say his last name. Uh, but this guy could be very good. If Julio Jones is out now, Julio Jones is designated to return from IR. Don't know if it's going to be this week or next week. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but still worth an ad. I have him rostered in one league or two, two leagues. MVS going against the Bears. Josh Reynolds slash Amon Ross St. Brown. Now, I don't know which wide receiver is going to do best. And I'm honestly split 50-50. But at least I did narrow it down to two of them, and I'm not including Khalif Raymond. So I feel like Josh Reynolds, same exact projection as Amon Ross St. Brown uh, going against the Broncos. It's pretty random. These uh, uh, Lions wide receivers, they seem to rotate. They seem to do well, then they seem to suck. You never know which one's going to do well, but I'm pretty confident it's these top two guys as far as the top two wide receivers for the Detroit Lions. Then we got Julio Jones. Um, keep in mind, returning from IR might not play this week. Maybe does play this week. Uh, Tyler Boyd, Jarvis Landry, Marvin Jones, Traquan Smith, uh, Marquez Callaway, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Jalen Guyton, and Curtis Samuel. 
Uh, for tight end, the three guys you really want to add are Ricky Seals-Jones with Logan Thomas suffering a significant injury. Cole Komet, 18 targets the last two games. That's mostly because Allen Robinson hasn't been playing. But still, I mean, when he comes back, Allen Robinson, sometimes he, he doesn't really do much. Three, four, five targets. So Cole Komet still getting targeted. Um, still continuing to improve, still quite young, but I do like him. Then we have Gerald Everett, who seemed to get targeted, seemed to be in the game plan, seemed to be used, but never really puts up a lot of fantasy points somehow. It's just how it is. And then if Waller misses another game, maybe Waller's back. Maybe he's not. My guess is Waller is going to play. So I'd say 60% chance Waller plays. I don't know. But we do have Foster Moreau. And in deeper leagues, we got Jared Cook, Austin Hooper, and Tyler Conklin. Ooh, Tyler Conklin. We need to move this guy. Actually, this guy needs to be moved way up. Yeah, let's go right there. There we go. Now we're talking. Yeah, let's move Tyler Conklin up to two. So I did that. I made a move. Hopefully, you're not skimming the video too fast when you watch this. All right, for defenses, what you really want to do is get one of these top nine defenses. I feel like you're going to be really solid. Maybe top eight, top seven, top I don't know, but top I think top nine is is a good like tear draw right there. So Broncos D number one defense going against the Lions, absolutely love it. Broncos D's playing well, great matchup. They should they should do it should be amazing. Lions can't put up a ton of points. Uh, then we have the Titans going against the Jags, Packers D going against the Bears. Bears don't score a lot of points. Chargers D going against the Giants now. Maybe Saquon Barkley runs on him a little bit, but I really don't see the Giants putting up a lot of points, and it's just going to be rough. Like, the Giants already struggle on offense, and now they're going to be putting up one less touchdown, right, we can project. That's pretty bad for a team that puts up, like, two touchdowns. So Chargers D's looking pretty good. Saints going against the Jets. Seahawks going against the Texans. Cowboys D going against Washington. Panthers D going against the Falcons. That could be a really good one, actually. And Chiefs D going against the Raiders. Then in deeper leagues, we have the Ravens going against the Browns. Now, Ravens have suffered some injuries on defense and just injuries overall. So keep tabs on that. We might have to X them out of this uh, week and may not want to consider them at all. But this is likely going to be a close, low-scoring game. That's just how it likely is going to be. So, like I said, it's starting to get into deep league territory here. You don't want to do this, but hey, I try my best to rank them. And then number 11, we have the Steelers D, 12 Bengals D, 13 Vikings D. Steelers offense is solid, but not great, not too explosive. So they don't score a ton of points. Then we have the Browns D going against the Ravens. Kickers is a very similar situation. You want to get one of these top nine guys if you can. So number one, just like the defense, we've got the Broncos going against the Lions. So that's Brandon McManus. Uh, I like Matt Gay. I actually ranked him just a tad high right before recording because I wanted to look at the weather. And I know the Cardinals play in a dome. And that's, you know, that's where they're playing. And it's just like there there is some heavy winds, right? 14, I'm looking at 14 mile an hour winds, 15, 16, 17. I'm seeing that pop up a lot. And I just wanted to make sure that I had a kicker, like when it's close, that it's not going to be too windy, like crazy winds. Um, You know, that's why one of the reasons why I got a. Yeah, some of these kickers ranked a little bit lower. Uh, Harrison Bucker, for example, that game could be kind of windy. I do love him, though. Uh, but, man, like, I don't know. Like, it's a little bit scary when, when the winds just pick up all of a sudden, those wind gusts. And then we got Greg Zerline, um, Tyler Bass, Randy Bullock, Dustin Hopkins, Matt Prater, and Brett Maher. That's the Saints kicker going against the Jets. That could be a little bit windy there in uh, New Jersey. Uh, so those are the top nine. I mean, Robbie Gold, Robbie Gold is still good, um, but a little bit. This game, I don't know about this Niners Bengals game. Could be messy. Could be weird. I don't know. And then uh, Evan McPherson in that same game. Jason Myers, don't trust the kicker. Love the matchup though. He'll get opportunities for sure. Extra points, field goals. He'll get both. Uh, really, like a lot of them. I just don't know if he's gonna make them. Although my dog's doing weird stuff. You okay? 
Uh, he's fine. Uh, then we got Mason Crosby. Good matchup. Again, like really good matchup, but I don't trust him. He's missing a lot of field goals this year. I just completely lost trust in Mason Crosby. Maybe this guy puts up like 17 fantasy points and whatever. Like it happens, but like whenever he goes out there, you're holding your breath. Like, is he going to make this kick? And he used to be pretty good back in the day. At least I would say above average. And now he's just. Like, you can't trust him. Like, I don't think he's going to be on the team anymore next year. Uh, then we got Ryan Suckup. Not a great matchup, but this could be a high-scoring game. So, Suckup could be a solid kicker. And we got Greg Joseph, who's been having a solid year this year. All right, guys. That's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe. Have those bell notifications turned on. Follow me on social media, at Fantasy Couch. Let's go get that W. Let's make playoffs. Let's do it. Peace.